What's up, strongest men, women, and children from blocks all around the world? I am my block strongest man, and tonight I have for you a very special guest, the Brownsville Brute, Jamie Wilson. Ciao, homie. Welcome back to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring strong men into the mainstream by discussing all of the latest strong man events in the greatest analytic detail that you'll find anywhere on YouTube. If you haven't done so yet, subscribe to this channel. Make sure to comment below whether you agree or disagree with my videos. I love the engagement and I respond to every single comment. Now on to today's topic. Hey Jamie, how are you this evening? Thanks for joining me. Hey, uh, I appreciate you having me. Uh, I'm doing really well. This is my rest day from the gym, so uh, I might just make sure I eat good, uh, maybe get on my stationary bike, do a little rehab and a little recovery work. Nice. All right. I won't push you too hard on the interview then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, for people who don't know you and kind of aren't aware of you, why don't you just uh, take a minute to just kind of brag about your accomplishments a little bit? You know, I started Strongman in 2014. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease back in February of 2005, uh, where I got down to about a 130 pounds. Wow. You know, I couldn't, uh, right before going into the hospital, I couldn't bowl a 10-pound uh, bowling ball without falling down to my knees. So uh, it was a pretty bad time in my life, you know, so I – Basically, back then in 2005, Crohn's and ulcerative colitis wasn't really as well known as it is now. You know, it wasn't really as heard of, you know, as it is now. So the doctors had a little trouble diagnosing me. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I, I about died, just to be quite frank. So, um, coming back from that, I, I got out of the hospital. Um, Let's see, about mid, mid February, 2005, after going in, uh, about the third week of January, uh, you know, so coming back from that, it was, uh, you know, that, that was a journey itself, you know, it was coming from 130 pounds. I, I remember, uh, you know, I had lifted weights, uh, before going into the hospital and I'd got up to about 185 pounds. I was about 155 pound kid uh, when I graduated high school. So uh, I got up to about 185 pounds. So I lost over 50 pounds, you know, when I was dealing with the sickness. Oh, that's so crazy. Getting back out of the, uh, you know, hospital and everything, get back in the gym. Uh, I couldn't bench press the barbell. So uh, yeah, I'd lost a lot of strength, size and everything. So. Uh, just as time went on, I got into uh, Strongman in 2014. Uh, you know, got a lot of my strength back, put a lot of my size back on. 2021, since then, I've qualified for nationals uh, three times. I competed once up in New York. Uh, and I was actually talking to John about this a couple of weeks ago where I got to compete against Andrew Clayton. Mm. Not which is a yeah huge name a strong man you know he's unfortunately he's dealing with an in injury right now and coming back from that but uh, but yeah as far as accomplishments that's probably you know just just competing for me is a huge accomplishment and a, sure. and a huge blessing itself absolutely for sure so you said yeah. that was up in new york you're in kentucky correct yes so, I mean, for people from other parts of the country and the world, I'm in New Jersey, you know, they kind of aren't familiar with that part of the country. Just give me like the best parts of what is Kentucky culture? <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, open, open fields, pretty much farmland. Um, you know, I guess the biggest city is going to be Louisville, of course, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of slow compared to New Jersey. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's slow until you start running with farmers. Then it gets a little fast. Well, that's, I, I want it to get fast. It doesn't always work like that, but I want it to be fast. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just wanted to ask you, I noticed on your IG post, like I think that from my perspective, you're equally impressive on overhead pressing and farmers, um, like grip events. Is that kind of like an, an intentional thing or uh, does one come more naturally to you than the other? Uh, overhead press, uh, I don't know if it really comes naturally, uh, but it's just always been my best event. 
and my strongest event. Uh, so, you know, I put a lot of work into it as well. Um, you know, I've had, uh, Jim Matar Sabatino, he coached me for two years, oh, cool. uh, you know, give me a lot of advice and, uh, you know, uh, you know, on technique and things to make it even better. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it, it's definitely came a long way. I mean, last night I hit the axle press from the rack, you know, 330 pounds for a pretty easy triple. Wow. So I, I'm looking for a big, a big overhead press this year. Yeah, that's awesome. So, it yeah. would overhead being best equal being your favorite, or do you have a favorite that maybe isn't necessarily your best uh, strongman event? Yeah, anything overhead press alike. I like circus dumbbell, axle log. Uh, you know, maybe one day I can like block a little bit more to where I can get that a record from uh, Wyatt Dawson. Okay, cool. <laughs> so let's kind of take a minute to rewind a little bit. Tell us something interesting about your background, your roots, your upbringing that you think folks might be interested in. Uh, you know, I don't really know. I, I started playing sports when I was five years old. I uh, started out with baseball. And I played baseball from the time I was five all the way to my senior year. Um, so, you know, I've always been competitive. I've always enjoyed sports, uh, you know, so I think, and I speak for a lot of people when I say this, uh, you know, as you get older, you're not playing the sports anymore. Like strongman's an outlet to get that, uh, you know, competitive energy out of, you know, yeah, to challenge yourself even more and continue to challenge yourself. You know, I'm 37 years old. I'll be 40 in a, a few years and uh, be able to compete in masters. And I want to continue to compete at that age and, uh, uh, you know, keep being competitive. Yeah. Well, you're young and I'm 45, so you're, uh, you're doing well. Yeah. I, you know, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know how it is, man. I'm kind of the same way, never at a competitive level, but I always wanted to challenge myself that way. You know, we have, uh, we needed a retaining wall at the house and we got stones all over the property and anybody else would get a wheelbarrow or some kind of tools. I pick them up one by one and run them over. Cause it's just fun. You know, some people don't get it, but uh, I talked to Marcus Crowder and he told me he just feels like most people don't like being uncomfortable. And like, I don't, that doesn't phase me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other thing I want to ask was about the iron shack. How did that come into existence? What does it mean to you? Uh, what is it uh, for people that don't know? <laughs> Of the Iron Shack, it's it's my home gym, so it's a little a little small concrete block shack out in my yard, you know. So uh, the reason, the way it came in existence is when I started Strongman, there was no gyms around here at all that had Strongman equipment. So <clears throat> I started collecting equipment and buying equipment from companies, individuals, and things like that. Sometimes after a show, a promoter might have some equipment for sale. I'd pick it up then. And, uh, you know, the commercial gym that I was going at at the time, going to at the time, uh, like I said, had none of the equipment. So I started actually getting traditional equipment as well, barbells, weights, racks, and leg presses, et cetera. And to where I just started uh, training at my home, you know, every day of the week versus just on Saturdays, you know. So that's how it started. So... So, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, I, I get me some training partners out here to train and push me a little, you know, a little harder than I would by myself. And, uh, you know, we just have a good time. Nice. So what kind of implements do you have in there? I'm curious to know. Just about every implement you can imagine. So I've got stones, logs, farmers, uh, I have fingers, fingers, car deadlift frame, uh, circus dumbbell, kegs, power kegs, stone of steel. You, you name it, I've got it a lot in there oh yeah it's it's to the point now i just picked up some more pieces of equipment it's to the point now i don't know what i'm gonna do with all of it yeah i mean i just saw uh john greaves interview with stan carradine it was the same way like he has a garage and he fits so much stuff in there i was like wow <laughs> yeah 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 uh, some, some some of my stuff's actually have to be moved uh to the basement of my house and even to the barn that i have out here on my property as well oh really okay yeah, I mean, well, the farmers you're using outside anyway, right? So, you know, yeah. kind of storing them. 
yeah, a lot of the a lot of the stuff that I keep outside and stuff like that is the stuff that's going to be moved outside anyway. Like anything moving, moving events, yokes, sandbags, and things like that. You know, they're they're out of the weather, of course, but I keep them out of the gym uh, because. Uh, for room issues one and the other they're going to be you know they're used for moving events anyway so i have to take it out to the uh the street that i live on just uh this is maybe me just being confused but if it's a concrete block shack why is it called iron because that's what it's, <laughs> because that's what it's filled with <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair enough brother fair enough <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's the thing i just actually picked up some more iron plates uh last week i found a good deal on them Let's face it, we're not seeing any good deals on weights anymore because of the pandemic and everything. So yep. I found some for about a dollar per pound. That's unheard of in 2021. That's amazing. In case you haven't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and picked them up. So, yeah, I have I, tons of weight, free weight there in the gym. And yeah. then kind of a, a piggyback question off of that is just your nickname brownsville brood i bet there's an interesting story about how that came about somebody gave it to you or you came up with it i just came up with it you know i live in brownsville kentucky uh you know brute you know brute and strong it goes hand in hand so you know why not yeah all right <laughs> uh, <laughs> fair enough so yeah. another thing I was just wondering is, you know, most strong men, strong women at some point have injuries, right? What would you say is a serious injury that you've gone through and kind of how did you push through it other than the Crohn's, of course? Um, I think just viewers would be inspired by seeing somebody still be successful after an injury and learn how to push through it and persevere. You know, I'm going to be honest with you here. I haven't had any serious injuries. Good. Um, you know, knock on wood. So I have had injuries, but I haven't had injuries since really competing in strongman. I've tore my right pec, got a lot of scar tissue here. There's a huge, huge crease going right here in my right pec. That was in my 20s. Uh, actually recovered from it fairly, you know, fairly quick. But as far as any serious injuries as competing, I haven't had any. I try to take care of my body the best I can, chiropractor visits, massages, and things like that. I try to listen to my body the best I can. Anytime something just doesn't feel right, any kind of little tweak, whatever, I'll put the weight down. I won't push it. Yeah. And I, I think that's very important is just listening to your body. Now, does that mean an injury is not going to happen? Absolutely not. If you do strongman long enough – injuries is going to happen. Right. You know, you know, and I'm sure you know that, but luckily as of to date, I haven't had any serious injuries that's kept me out of training or anything for a period of time that required any kind of surgery or anything like that. Good. All right. Well, that's great news. Yeah. Um, so kind of the way that I found out about you was through uh, the Mammoth Strain Challenge 5. Um, yeah. How did you first find it? Like, how did it first cross your desk? How did it first – uh, become an attractive option for you that you wanted to compete there? Well, uh, you know, I, I, I've always been kind of leery about competing there just because of the floor that they compete on at the Mammoth. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a dirt floor, and Dave Waters does a good job of trying to keep it maintained and uh, as flat as possible and as safe as possible. But still, at the end of the day, I got to look out for me. You know, I still right. got to work. For, I, I work for a living. Uh, I'm a single dad, so – I've got to make sure she's, you know, provided for. So, uh, but so I did the, a friend of mine, Nick Sanders, he, he came by the, you know, he mentioned the Mauser block world record in the 300 pound class to me. And so we, we had started training for it. Uh, I think I told John it was, uh, six weeks It's probably more seven, eight weeks before the actual show. So I figured it, you know, it was a static event. Didn't really require a lot of moving. So I wasn't really worried about the floor, uh, which it did kind of have a factor later on. But so, yeah, Nick Sanders had mentioned it to me and uh, it appealed to me. So, you know, I thought I'd go for that, uh, you know, that world record. So uh, just kind of to wrap up, tell everybody how they could get a hold of you, follow you, anything you'd like to promote. I don't know if you're sponsored or in affiliation with anything, but whatever you'd like to promote, take this opportunity. I mean, you know, I. <laughs> I've taken in a lot of new competitors over the years, novice competitors, people that hasn't ever competed or got a chance to mess with implements. 
Um, you know, I, I Jeremiah Benefield helped me out when I first got in. He invited me up to his place, and I was able to touch the implements, compete for the first time. So I do that for people. You know, I try to give back to the community. Uh, people can reach me on Instagram, you know, at Brownsville underscore brute or Facebook Messenger. They can look up Jamie Wilson. They can probably recognize the profile picture. Uh, and shoot me a message on Messenger. So, so yeah, if anybody's interested that hasn't got a chance to uh, – interested in competing, that hasn't got a chance to mess with any infamous, wants to learn a little bit, have a little fun, better themselves, whatever, shoot me a message. I'd be more than happy to help you out the best I can. Fantastic. That's really generous. And, uh, once again, I really wanted to thank you for jumping on tonight. Uh, I know we stayed a little longer than we wanted to, but uh, greatly appreciate it, and we'll catch up again for the next comp. Absolutely, John. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, anytime, brother. Anytime. You just let me know. All right, sir. You have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.